Morning guys, I'm Dave Kennedy, right at the Pathfinder School. I thought what we'd do today is talk a little bit about bow fishing equipment and accoutrements. I had a lot of questions on the bow fishing video about that and I want to explain how cheap, easy, and fun it can be to bow fish. Remember that the Asian grass carp and the buffalo carp are non-native species to the U.S. They are invasive. They have ruined a lot of the waterways along the Mississippi Valley and the Mississippi River, tributaries and things like that. So shooting them, even if it's for fun and you're not eating them, is not something that should be considered as cruelty to animals. They are an invasive species that needs to be eliminated. So boat fishing them is a way for you to practice your archery as well as eliminate an invasive species. On the other side of that coin is you can always keep them far and use that for bait, cut bait for other fish for trapping season. Stay with me, we'll get started. Okay, so let's start our boat fishing conversation by talking about bows. Boat fishing is unique to archery in the fact that you don't have to have a really strong bow to bow fish. 30 pounds is plenty. So the bows that you can find at flea markets and yard sales and things like that made out of fiberglass, those bows are going to work fine for bow fishing, which makes it a very common man type sport. You don't have to have a 45 pound or 40 pound plus bow to meet legality issues for bow fishing and most of your shots are going to be within 12 to 15 feet because you're going to be fishing in shallow water so that you can see the fish and then you're only going to be just a few feet away from the fish if you're in a boat or if you're walking the bank line or something like that to shoot that fish so you're going to get close shots so it doesn't require that heavy poundage of bow a 30 pound bow is plenty and a good example of that would be a bow like this one. This is a Ben Pearson fiberglass bow that was purchased at a flea market by me not even three weeks ago for $30. It's in perfect, almost mint condition. I put a new string on it, did not have a string with it. It's marked on it uh, 35 pounds. That's more than enough for bow fishing. It's all made out of rubber and fiberglass, so you're never going to destroy it. It makes a great survival bow. 35 pounds, to be honest with you, is plenty to kill a small game or a deer, especially with close shots inside of, you know, 12, 15 yards. But legality says, at least in Ohio, that the bow has to be 40 pounds to be a huntable bow. But for bow fishing, there's no such regulation. So this is a perfect bow fishing bow for $30. Now, what are you going to have to add to this bow to make it a bow fishing type device? You're going to have to add a reel and an adapter. It does not have a hole screwed in it. A lot of bows are threaded in the front with a hole for a stabilizer, is what most of those were drilled for, or for a fishing attachment, as in some of the older Fred Bear recurves and things like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to add an attachment to this that costs about $15 that will allow us to add that fishing reel to the front. And the way that works, I'll show you another bow real quick. This again is a solid fiberglass Ben Pearson bow. This one is 45 pounds and it's a recurve bow. Again, bought very cheaply. I think I paid $25 maybe for this at the most and this is a 45 pound bow so this is a legal bow for any hunting. I've done a video on this bow. It draws very smooth. It's going to shoot any arrow you want to shoot out of it. You really want to shoot feathers and not veins which means you want to shoot the feathers and not the, flet the plastic fletchings. But if you have to shoot fletchings out of it made out of plastic that's okay too. For a bow fishing arrow you don't need any of that stuff. The adapter that you're going to put on the front looks just like this and basically all it is I'm going to pull this one off it's a piece of ABS plastic that's got that hole drilled in the front of it and it just wraps around your bow with a couple rubber, rubber straps so you can put this on any bow that you have it doesn't matter attachment costs about fifteen dollars you just place that on the front of your bow right below the grip and then you wrap around with these rubber devices and there's a locking pin on there or a stay, stay pin I guess what you want to call it that you just snap that piece of rubber on top of right there and that holds it in place and then clamp it down on the other side do exactly the same thing get it evened up clamp it on there and do the same thing again and just stretch it till you get to a hole it's got multiple holes in it so you can adjust it to whatever bow you have and then you have that mounting system on there for your bow reel. Now, again, simple stuff, common man for the bows. We have now got the Primal Gear Survival Bow. The takedown bow is pre-drilled for this reel. And this reel is one that I've been doing R&D work with that should be on our website along with that adapter. 
within the next couple of weeks. And basically it just has a screw mounted in a plastic reel. That screws right into the front. If you have a pre-drilled bow like this one, if your bow is pre-drilled like this one with a drilled hole in it, or your recurve has a pre-drilled hole in it because you've got an older model Fred Bear or something like that, you can screw that right in there without the adapter. And basically the reel is just a very simple plastic reel. You can see this one has a Pathfinder logo sticker on it, solid black. And what I use for bow fishing line, you know, they sell specific line for bow fishing, but you don't need that stuff. Bank line works perfect for this. This is a number 12 bank line, which means it's right at a hundred pound test. That's more than enough, even for big carp. It has a little knocking point or notching point right there on the bottom of it to hold your string in place, just like a fishing reel has. And then it just you screws take that in. plastic reel and you would just screw it into that mount, just like this. Until you get it bottomed out in there or as deep as you want it to go and it doesn't matter if that thing is like perfectly straight in fact Canada a little bit better because it allows that line to come off there easier when you're doing a downward shot toward a fish I kind of like the fact that that's canted down just a little bit from the bow and not straight in front of it and that's all you really need and I usually put that clip right on the bottom just like that and that's all you really need to start bow fishing other than your arrow. So you've got about a $15 adapter if you've got a fiberglass bow, about a $12 to $15 reel. So you got 30 bucks there, 30 bucks maybe in a fiberglass bow. So now I got $60 in my whole setup, excluding the arrow. You'll be able to do all of this for less than $100. Plus, if you've got a heavy enough bow, you can use it for hunting as well. So now it becomes your hunting bow and your fishing bow. Okay, so now that we've talked about the bows and the reels, let's talk real quick about arrows because it requires a special type of arrow to bow fish with as well. You can modify any arrow that you have to work for bow fishing. Very common man way to do it, and I'll show you how to do that. But I also want to walk you through specific fishing arrows from the takedown arrow that we sell at the Pathfinder website, and we'll talk a little bit about the muzzy fishing arrows as well, the Impala scale type fishing arrows. We'll talk about two different ones of those and then we'll talk about making our own bow fishing arrow out of an existing arrow that we have in our kit so that we can do it in common man fashion if we so choose. So stay with me and we'll walk through these arrows one at a time. Okay so the first arrow we'll talk about is the Pathfinder takedown fishing arrow. It employs the same AMS bow fishing slider system that Muzzy uses on their fishing arrows basically has a locking device here and a slider here so basically you would attach this to your fishing reel this would be the line that you would wrap around that reel just like you saw earlier in this video on the bow fishing reel and then when you put this arrow into the rest basically that slide goes forward so that the line and nothing else is in your way when it's sitting in the bow and then when the arrow is shot the slider comes down into this lock point at the back of the arrow and then pulls line off of the reel and then you can just retrieve the fish by hand or wind it around the reel. It's easier to just retrieve it by hand and then wind it back up, depending on the size of the fish, depending on how well you've got him shot. And this arrow takes down into three pieces. So it becomes very convenient for you to pack this inside your backpack along with maybe a couple of other arrows. Um, all of our takedown arrows at the Pathfinder School come in a plastic tube. So you could store two or three take down normal arrows and one fishing arrow in this tube and have everything you need in your backpack. Now as far as the tip goes for this Pathfinder arrow, this is a Pathfinder fishing tip and it is made to screw into any carbon or aluminum arrow that has the threaded fixture on the front to screw in. As far as I know this is the only one on the market like that that's a fishing tip. Most of them are glue-ons or pin-ons that go on a solid fiberglass or solid carbon arrow. These are made to go on aluminum or hollow carbon arrows that you already have in your kit. Basically it has a sharp point on the front and two barbs on it so that when it goes into the fish it can't come back out. Once you get the fish on that arrow, what you're going to need to do with this basically is make sure that this pushes all the way through the fish. It may not happen until you get him on shore or in the boat, whatever the case may be, and then just unscrew the arrow tip just like this and the fish will slide off of your arrow and then you just replace the tip and you're ready to fish again. This is a very, very good system. 
it's a very good system for holding fish it works really really well this is something that we developed at the pathfinder school it goes with our takedown arrows but we also sell this fishing tip separate so you can use it with any arrow that you have okay let's talk about a couple different muzzy hunting arrows this is a solid piece of carbon fiber or fiberglass with the exact same slide lock system on it that I showed you on the Pathfinder arrow and this has the muzzy and pale of scale tip on it now the difference with this tip is this is a newer model tip and the way they've set this up is you can turn this arrow a half a turn like this and it loosens that barb so that you can pull that out of the fish and then just slide it back and turn it back that half turn and it locks it in place again the only thing is you have to be very cognizant of that thing, screwing and unscrewing while you're fishing. When you're burying this thing in the mud and pulling it out and things like that, it tends to vibrate loose a little bit. So you've got to check it a lot. But this was really made more for people who are tournament fishing for bow fishing and things like that so that they can get the fish off the arrow very quickly, get them in the boat, in the live well, in the cooler, whatever the case may be, and move on to the next shot. Not necessary for self-reliance, although this is a very good quality arrow and I don't think you're ever going to destroy the thing. Okay, this is another muzzy type hunting head and this one does not have the locking device on it so the barbs are a little bit floppy on this one. It works just fine, no problem. This one does not have a knock point on it. It was set up with a ball on the end to be shot out of a slingshot. It's got a couple of duct tape feathers on it. Feathers are very unnecessary for bow fishing. This was made early on. Um, they might give you a little bit of stability over you know, a shot that's maybe over 20, 30 feet but you're not going to take shots like that. 99% of the time your shots are going to be inside of 15 feet straight down into the water and you're not going to need any kind of stabilization on there at all. The reason these are made out of duct tape is so that they're waterproof. Now this one has a system set up on it. Instead of a slide lock, it has a homemade system on it. And you can do this with your normal arrows. And basically all I've done is I've tied a self-tightening knot on this end. I've ran the string up the arrow, just like this, to the other end of the arrow right before the knock and I've tied another self tightening knot there so that when you pull them apart and spread them apart they tighten up so you have a slide here now instead of hooking your line to this type slide system you basically can just take your take a swivel like is on the Pathfinder line right here hook that swivel right onto that line and that allows that to travel back and forth on the arrow so that when you have your arrow in the bow you basically have that swivel up here and as it shoots the swivel travels to the back of the arrow pulling line off of your reel same system just common man setup and you can use bank line for this as well I think this is just a colored mason's line but you could use any type of bank line for this I would prefer to use at least a number 12 to possibly a number 36 but number 12 at a minimum for a setup like this and you could do that type of setup on a normal arrow just like this and this is a normal three-piece takedown arrow from the Pathfinder school but you can use it on any arrow aluminum carbon whatever the case may be you could use that slide system of string on any arrow like this then all you need to do is you're going to have arrows in your quiver that are going to get feathers ripped off of them and things like that when you get to that point and that's no longer a hunting arrow then it becomes a fishing arrow so you just strip those feathers off your knife because you don't need them anymore tie that string on there and leave it and then you either put the fishing tip on there you would either take this tip off and put one of the Pathfinder fishing arrow tips on there. Like I said, this is made to screw into any arrow that has that adapter on the front for a screw in tip or broadhead. And now I have a fishing arrow. All I have to do is put my slide string on there and I'm ready to rock and roll. Now, if I don't want to go that route and I want to be really, really common man about it, I can make a fishing arrowhead. It's not going to be as effective or near as robust as something like this, but it will work on smaller fish for sure. And all I really have to do is take a safety pin, and this one happens to be a brass colored one, and just spread it out like this. Okay. Take my multi-tool, trim it back a little bit here and here. Trim them about even if you can. Now you're left with this. Then I'm going to take that and put it on, I have to open that spring up a little bit to slide it over the collar of this screw in fishing tip or the screw in field point. But once I spread it out enough that it'll go over that 
go over the top of that. Sometimes it takes a little doing. There we go. Once I do that, then I can take and screw that into a normal arrow with just one of my normal field points. Screw that down tight. And you might want to get your pliers on that once you do that, just to make sure that thing doesn't vibrate loose. Just put your multi-tool pliers on there and screw it down. And then I'll just take those two barbs and bend them backwards, just like this. And I have effectively made a fishing arrow with barbs on it that the fish shouldn't be able to pull off of. Now, a large fish is going to bend these barbs. These are not heavy gauge steel barbs like what we have on the Pathfinder fishing arrow, but very similar. So if you're with smaller fish or it's a drop dead emergency, if you've got some safety pins in your kit, you can do this to fish or frog or whatever the case may be. This will work fine for frogs, no doubt about it. But this is what you're going to want for anything, you know, 10 pound fish or bigger, you're going to want something like this. It's got heavy gauge steel barbs on it that aren't going to bend. But this is a good common man solution for a fishing arrow if you need one just for frogging or for smaller fish along the water's edge. Okay, so just a couple of more real quick tidbits before we end this video on you know bow fishing equipment and things like that when you're bow fishing it's going to take you a little while to get the hang of this and if you noticed in the video that I posted of me bow fishing with Jeff Barber from Primal Gear it took me four five six eight ten shots to get the hang of where to aim that arrow it's very hard to get used to aiming at a certain point or aiming center mass on a target and shooting it because you don't do that when you're bow fishing you have to aim low and how low you aim depends on a, a several things. It really depends on the angle that you're shooting at the fish and how deep the water is that the fish is in and how deep he is in the water. Because the refraction of light actually makes you think the fish is in a spot he's really not. So you have to shoot low in order to hit that fish. And all of that depends on several variables. What I found is that once I got used to letting my mind understand that I had to shoot low, the way I shoot archery is instinctive, so I very seldom do anything more than look at the target I want to hit and shoot. I don't really aim, per se. I let my eyes focus what I want to shoot, and that's where I let the arrow go, and I hope the arrow is going to go where I'm looking. It's almost the same thing you have to do with bow fishing. And with bow fishing, you're very seldom ever going to come to full draw. Most of the draws that I took, or most of the shots that I took, to be honest with you, when we were bow fishing the other night, most of the shots I took were from about right here. They were really down below me, which that helps you to aim lower because you're not bringing that thing up to your eye level where you're normally shooting. So by bringing it just up here to the bottom of your chin or halfway into your chest, you're already aiming low a little bit when you're looking at the target, and that seemed to help me out a lot as well. But you're not going to get that chance to take full draw and aim at that fish most of the time because they're going by too quick. The boat's moving or the fish is swimming. So you've got to basically snap shoot. You're just going to half three quarter draw and snap shooting at that fish. And you'll get used to it after a while. It took me a little bit to do it. You know, like I said, it took me 10, 10 shots or so before I really got used to where to aim. But after that, you know, I was plugging fish left and right. Um, I probably missed two, three more times throughout the night. But, you know, I hit five fish at the same time. So once you get used to that aiming low and how low to aim and that snap shooting at half or three quarter draw, you'll get it down pretty good. There's no doubt in my mind that you could do bow fishing very inexpensively from a canoe that you could stand up in with, you know, a 70 to 130 lumen headlight. You could get in shallow areas of any lake or creek and you could bow fish like that. Or you could walk the banks with a pair of nice mucks or hip waders or something like that, walk along the bank and you could bow fish like that as well. And there ain't nothing wrong with shooting frogs with a bow either. So it's a very good common man family type sport. Get your kids involved in it. They'll enjoy it very, very much, I'm sure. I want to take one of my youngins down to do it as soon as they're old enough down to Alabama. We were at Lake Gunnersville. I had some questions about that as well. Very good bow fishing lake. But there's places right here in Ohio I'm pretty sure I can get some good bow fishing in as well. So I'm going to be trying that in future episodes of On the Water's Edge. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for all my friends and my sponsors and affiliates and instructors. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.